much of this bacteria is resistant to present-day antibiotics. It already had a resistance to antibiotics before antibiotics were even made. Say that again. It did not develop resistance to antibiotics. It already had it, had been entombed 150 years. Right. Uh, brought it out, fought it. Right. And uh, the, they were able to revive some of these bacteria yes. from their stomach, uh, bacteria that was there. And then when they applied different antibiotics uh, to that, that there was already a resistance to those antibiotics, which were made over 100 years later. Yes. So they didn't and, respond. And of course, too, even these, these bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics keep being bacteria. They don't Certainly. change in anything Certainly. else. And again, that coincides with what the Bible says in Genesis 1, 10 times God said, after their kind, after their species, yes. after their nature. Yes. So... This tendency has not produced a higher structure, higher order, and evolutionary development. It all, the potential was already there in the genetic code. Right. Now, where we do change it, however, we get real detriments. Would you emphasize this to our audience? Again, as we mentioned in our other program, is that often it will produce less of what already had. This chicken does not have any feathers. Of course, he gets sunburned in the daytime. He gets cold at night. Or mm. she... Uh, this uh, tribe in uh, Zimbabwe, Africa, has an unfortunate gene mutation that produces these kind of feet. Um, they're still human beings, um, but they have this unusual uh, uh, occurrence in their feet. This also happens sometimes in people's hands. It has a lobster hand uh, that happens as well. It's an unfortunate occurrence that happens. It is a mutation. Yes. As you can see, it's not beneficial. We've changed the code. We've actually rendered them less viable than the tribe down the road. Right. And there's more to say. Would you explain this to us in Th these this, moments? This one is amazing. And again, this is real science, okay? Now, here's a picture of me when I was a young man. Uh, but anyway... I would recognize yes, you of course. anywhere. But, um, Your hair color has changed. There you go. Uh, Dr. Jerome Lejeune, who's discovered the cause of Down syndrome at the university in Paris, made this statement, and this, this man knows science, he's a great researcher, he says this, it's futile to pretend to the public that we understand how an amoeba evolved into a man when we cannot tell our students how a human egg cell uh, fertilized produces both skin cells and brain cells. And then of course we can watch every step of the human development and we don't know how it happens. He says it's futile to say we know how I, an amoeba became a man. And this man studies real science. Yes. So uh, for them to postulate that they know the evolutionary development is to postulate a non-entity. It just isn't there. Ev any evolution, any variation is on the horizontal plane. Let's emphasize to this audience in these moments. We have changed the code. In fact, we have various... Uh, types of stegosaurs that are all within the family, yet they have slight variation. And due to genetic variation, we, our children, can be, I had a child born with a defect due to genetic variation. And uh, he's waiting for me in glory. So every day I think of him and I anticipate the moment I'll be with him. His name was Stephen Michael. Mm. So genetic defects can affect us. Now, we are defective. Now, what causes, uh, just in a thumbnail sketch, as a chemist, what could cause a genetic defect or a variation? Well, one, of course, is the high concentration of ultraviolet light, which yes. the people did not have before the flood. Right. Just all the contaminants we have in the air, in the water, and in earth, and gets into our food, this is all affecting us constantly. We have so much more contaminants, which are other chemicals. This is the thing we saw, particularly in cancer research, of how to produce cancer, which of course is not beneficial, but it's produced because of these things that affect our bodies. Just stress itself. Uh, there's a good verse in Proverbs, a merry heart does good like a medicine. Absolutely. And of course, if you're stressed out, you're worried or whatever, you're harming your body medically. Uh, whereas if you're joyful, you can smile, it makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> uh, the Bible always has the answer. That's right. And the Bible turns out to be, no matter how we try it. Uh, in fact, John, uh, I was uh, lecturing at another creation conference a few weeks ago. And one of the other lecturers said, uh, and, and I perked up, the Bible and the God of the Bible are the only entities that invite scrutiny. You debated evolutionists. 
once you exposed that what they had was philosophy and propaganda, you won the debate handily because you had evidence. But the Bible invites, and the God of the Bible invites scrutiny. He said, trust me, test me and try me, prove me. And of course we have. Now that brings us to you and the application of this program. We've changed the code. It's obvious that from Adam we are very poor representatives of the human race. It's obvious that we've been harmed not only by ultraviolet intrusion. In fact, at UCLA in the microbiology department, they announced that every day of our lives, at least 10,000 times per day, every cell of our body is accosted by free radicals from the atmosphere due to ultraviolet radicalization of the oxygen molecule. So we're all damaged. We've changed the code. We're nothing or only a shadow of what we could have been and would have been under the pre-flood context. But we really changed the code, shuffled the information, destroyed our viability in the fall. But God wants to correct that. We have fallen. We are sinful. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to earth to live with us and show us that it's possible to live a sinless life. He did. And then he died for us. He shed his blood. And then he arose from the dead and he ascended to heaven. And now in a universal dimension, he is knocking at your heart's door, wanting entrance. Would you pray this simple prayer? Just pray this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I've sinned. Right now, Lord Jesus, I ask you into my heart. Right now, come in, apply your blood, cleanse my sin, forgive my account, and I will serve you with all my heart for all eternity. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.